we have any adjustments to the agenda? Hearing none. I'll take a motion to approve the minutes of January 17th, 2024. I'll make the motion. I'll second that. Is there any further discussion on those minutes or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed, so carry. I'll take a motion to approve the minutes of January 22nd, 2024 special meeting. Make that motion. I'll second. Do you have any further discussion on those minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed, so carry. Comments from the community? Hearing none, uh, correspondence. The only thing I received was um, a letter, uh, actually direct, it was addressed to us, but it's addressed in a letter to Belinda. Our um, tax attorney is no longer gonna be working on tax sales. So Belinda will have to look for a new tax sale attorney uh, moving forward. Less and less attorneys are doing that. Uh, other correspondence we received, I gave you all a copy of on your tables, a copy of the memorandum of understanding between the town of Wolka and the town of Wolka um, school district, uh, uh, placing the Leach Field for the community wastewater project up at the ball field at the school. Um, it didn't come in time to be on the agenda, and I thought you needed a time to review it. Um, so if you could do that uh, for next meeting, we'll have it on the agenda for approval to sign. I think that's all I have for correspondence. Um, highway department discussion of our front body. Dylan, you're on. Yes. <clears throat> Want to come up here by the microphone? Yeah. People can hear you, please. I tried to put together a couple things here. Uh, the first one is a Western Star repairs estimate, the 2016 estimate. Does everybody have one? Mm -hmm. So uh, these are estimates without looking back through bills and getting exact numbers. But as near as I can figure within the last three years, this is supposed to say 21 through 24. Uh, we put about $31,800 into that truck. <clears throat> And this coming year, I expect that we'll put in, depending on which route we go, if we put a new body on that truck, we're going to look at around $51,000. If we were to have that body rebuilt, it would be around 27000 And like I said, these are estimates. Um, I don't think it would be any higher than that. So... <clears throat> move on to this sheet that I've got here which kind of dictates the options as far as I can see uh, 2024 all the way through 2031 I've got all the equipment that we have right now that we're making payments on <clears throat> uh, 2024 all the way until 27, we've got 111,836 going out and we're budgeting 115. We use a balance of $3,100. And that balance doesn't come up 
to an, to per, to enough money to be able to afford a new truck until 2031, as far as I can tell. We did anticipate increasing that moving forward, just so you know. Okay, I wasn't sure. Yeah, so, I, so you know. I did this. So I wasn't sure. Um, and then below that, I, I just put together for for something to think about all the equipment that we have what it costs to replace it new and how much money we'd have to put in to a fund each year if we wanted to replace these items in these intervals. If we wanted to replace the trucks every seven years, which I think is a pretty common cycle, uh, we'd have to put away about $40,000 a year for replacement. Per truck, right? Per truck, yes. Uh, the yellow iron, <clears throat> The greater the loader, the excavator, I think 15 years is pretty plenty realistic. You could keep some of it, and you might be able to keep even longer than that. I'm not sure. I think 15 years is a pretty safe number. Uh, the little ton truck, 10 years, I think is pretty feasible for that too. And uh, the total on that yearly is 172000 And that is if you're you know starting from a clean slate too with no payments going out. <clears throat> so I guess uh, with what I've come up with, we just we do not have enough money to buy a new truck that I can see. On our schedule, we have 2025. Um, I think it's um, our problem, not yours. Okay, I I just I just wanted to present this. And I just don't want show to it. worry about it. Um, no, I just want to, I just want to know where the, yeah, because I I can't see it here. <laughs> I know, it it's money. Um, somehow we'll figure it out. But as I said to you this week, I think it's important that we stay on our schedule because if we get off it, then it it really makes things worse. I certainly agree with that. So. So are we in agreement according to the original schedule that in 2025 we were going to replace Joey's truck? That's what I have on there. That seems realistic to me if there's money right. there somewhere. Right. Okay. And if that is the case, are we talking about taking order? Are we going to get the new truck in 25 or order it in 25? I would say pay for it and start paying for it in 25. It's all about money. Yeah. But that would mean delivery summer of 25. Right. It would be in the garage in 25. So it's going into the... Order now. Correct. They're a year and a half out. The truck... Uh, I've, I've got these quotes, too, that you guys can look at. Yeah. Um, the truck, if you were to buy a Western Star order, Western Star right now, the chassis would be in... Uh, late summer, early fall, uh, but Viking to outfit it with the plow and all that stuff. We're looking at not getting it until the following spring. They're they're way way out. And a freight liner, uh, we would take delivery of the chassis in about a year from now, around January February, and then Viking, same story. We wouldn't get that until next fall. Maybe later. <clears throat> we need to figure it out so that um, we didn't have to pay any money until at least July of 25 when our new budget started. Okay. So it I can't think... be spring. It can be fall or summer. Okay, I think if... It would be, I think it would be right there if we were to order it right now before we even took delivery of it. I think it'd be pretty close to that. Okay, so that's for the 2016? Yes. When we talked, you had a whole different plan, so I'm like, my head's spinning. Um, I've had a bunch of different plans I know. in my head. <laughs> Sorry if I'm confused. 
Um, so, so what is your plan uh, in terms of the body? Body's problem, I thought it, that's what we were It is, doing. and it really, the solution I think to that really hinged on when we were gonna be getting a new truck. If we're talking about getting a new truck next year, then I would recommend that we have Billy Allen fix that thing and hopefully get it through another year. If we're going to keep it for another five years, then we should probably put a new body on it. <clears throat> and if we keep it for another five years, it's going to take us out of that rotation. Mm. Right. Kind of catch. Right. Which puts us at some point both replacing 19 and, and 16. Two trucks at the same time. Exactly. So we got the three trucks, and if we want to get into a seven-year cycle with all of them, we need to get a new one every two and a half years. So 25, we'll put it that on schedule, and mine will be 27, and then his will be up in 29. <laughs> right. That's what I have on it. Yeah. 29 for yours. Mine. Are you num number one? We're paying for now. Number two, I have 25 and number three and 29. Yeah, I think on that, on that draft, there was one truck that we kept for 10 years in order to spread them. I think it was your truck that needed to get us another 10 years. Uh, oh, 2029. 20, yeah. yeah. Well, we run into a problem there, though, because that's the same year that his is going to be going. That's true. So we'll be at two at the same time. Right. Right. So I'm, I'm just saying, I think with that draft, I don't think that that is accurate. And that was one of the things I was struggling with when we were looking through all of that, was trying to figure out how that schedule made sense because it didn't to me there. And I just, figured I couldn't understand it. I think that we've started a rotation with his truck and, and moving forward, we need to get a new one every two and a half years. Right. So yep. that would be new one in 25, another new one in 27. Yeah. Going into the plowing season, 25, 26 with a new truck. Right. And going into the plowing season, 27, 28 with, with a new, new truck. truck. Right. And then again in 29, 30. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So when would, um, Dylan's truck. Twenty-seven. What's your plan? <clears throat> well, for bodies are. If we're going to get a new truck in 2025, I vote to do the bare minimum and get it through for one more year. That makes a pile of sense. If we expect delivery in 25, then okay. no reason to spend. What was your number? 51 something on, on yeah. one more year? If we're going to keep it another five years, then maybe that makes sense. Yeah, no. No, because that thirty thousand in three years, that ten thousand dollars that you've been putting into it is gonna climb. Yeah. At the end of that five years. <laughs> Good. Yeah. No, I I are we looking for a motion? Somebody to make a motion on repairing the body. Repairing the body, order a truck. Do you want me to order a truck now? As long as we don't have to pay anything before July first, two thousand twenty two. Okay. Make I'll make sure of that. It's on our schedule, which we can prove. I can dig into that and see when we would have to pay for it and figure that all out. Um, do you have a recommendation for us on which one? I, I think uh, we do need to <clears throat> somewhat make a motion. Having you go forward with a certain truck. I would, I've got these two estimates. And there's about a $10,000 difference between the two of them. Um, we look through the specs and uh, the the Western Star, the benefit financially there is it's a little bit more money, but he says it usually comes out in the wash with trade. 
it usually brings in more trade. And the, the thing that I like most about it personally is that it's got to have a heavier frame and a heavier suspension. That's a more solid built truck, in my opinion. It's worth the extra 10000 10, that's the two hundred and eighty thousand fifty dollar truck. Yeah, and we're looking at a if the truck's in the shape it is in right now, about a forty thousand dollar trade. Put it somewhere around two forty. I guess it all really depends on who can deliver though within that span of time. Truck. Uh, the Western Star would be late summer, early fall, the chassis. Mm -hmm. And then Viking would be, uh, you know, next year, 2025, summer 2025. And the Freightliner is a little bit farther out. Next February, January, February, we'd take delivery of that chassis. So you'd be into your plow season? Yeah, but we're expecting that. We're expecting we're going to be in the next year plow season with the truck we have now. Anyway, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna finish plowing spring of twenty five with that. Yes. Yeah. And you feel confident you can do that? If we have Billy fix that thing up, yeah, I think so. And he was going to fix it for a price, wasn't he? It's he, it's a real. I I put uh I put twenty thousand down and I hope I don't think it'll be more than that. I think that, that's quite an inflated number. I'm hoping it'll be way less. I'm hoping it'll be like ten or maybe less. Well, that last tax job we did is that still holding out? It's still holding. Perfect. So, but I you know I don't want to go into next winter with it that like that. No, no, but just a testament to what he can do with. Yeah. I think the assessment to what he can do with yeah. bubble gum. The thing with like Bill said is uh, what he's going to run into is where do you stop? Because yeah. there's so much rust. It's like once he tears into it, it's like how much do you keep going or where stop somewhere under that twenty thousand dollar number? Yeah, where do you want to stop? <laughs> right. So, I think he could pretty realistically fix that thing up pretty good for certainly no more than that. Well, do we need to make a motion on it? Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion that we go with the uh, refurb on the that truck. The best. And also, we need a motion. Okay, so I'll second that. All those in favor? All right. Oh, so carry. Then we need a motion for Dylan to. What are our new truck for the schedule? To be on the equipment schedule. I'll make that motion. I'll second that. Which vehicle? Yeah. We need to know which one. Well, yeah. 280,000. Yeah. Western Star. Western Star, yeah. Western Star. That's it. <laughs> Okay, so I have a motion on the floor to um, authorize Dylan to order a Western Star tandem truck, $280,000 plus uh, for July 1st, 25 delivery. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Prepared. Dylan, I'm going to get on a new truck. Uh, I'd like to go with these, this other style body. <clears throat> and why is that? There's less moving parts on it. So it's not the systems that we have now with the inner body that's that dump on the side. It's proven, we've proven that that, that hinge is weak and any, anything beyond like seven or eight years with them, they start running into problems. So the town of Hardwick has these, uh, these other style bodies with a center feed chain and there's no side dump. It's less moving, moving parts. I, I hope, I think that they'll hold up better. They've got two or three of them over there and uh, they've been super happy with them. They haven't had very little problems. You said they've got one over there. It's five, six years old, right? Eight. I think it's eight or nine years old. They got self adjusting chains in them. <clears throat> one last thing we got to watch out. I mean, we still got to watch out. 
Yeah. I think they'll be less costly. Uh, those side dumps that we have now, we're always throwing parts at them. The pistons, the side dump pistons, we put, we change one of them at least every year and they're a thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, speaking of new trucks, the salt sand controls, are you going with the same style the state has where they're speed regulated, set it and forget it kind of deal or? I haven't got that far into it. To be or, honest with you. Or salt truck I've got now. <clears throat> It does. Okay. Yeah, it has a lot of like, There's a short answer there. Yeah, ground speed. Anything else? You happy? I think so. I think that's it for me. <laughs> Rambled enough. I'll leave you guys alone. Hi, you're welcome to stay. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Project manager's report. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. Um, I feel like I'm the insurance manager, <laughs> but things are moving along. Um, I can first report on Federal Highway. Um, we have completed uh, the grant application for the North Wolcott Road, and that has been signed off um, by the state. And today we just received the um, uh, app grant application for uh, the pond bridge uh, rebuild. Um, and uh, that looks like that will uh, get back to them today or tomorrow and uh, should then go back to the state for signature. Um, so <clears throat> those two have been completed and are moving along. Um, and I don't know how long it's going to take for um, actual uh, cash to move into the town, uh, but all of the gears are moving in that direction. Um, secondly, with VLCT, um, we have received payment for uh, the salt, and we've received payment for all of the vehicle repairs, um, including uh, the fire truck uh, engine one um, that suffered some repairs from the flood. So that has all been uh, completed and paid for. Um, and today I received uh, DocuSigns for uh, the remainder. So that includes everything, all of the content of uh, both the fire department and the garage um, and all of the physical uh, damage that occurred on the garage. Um, as soon as we sign off on those DocuSigns, um, they'll start issuing checks back to the town. So it should happen very quickly. Um, there was there were a couple of denials, and um, they were uh, related to uh, the septics. So all of the septic uh, pumping that we did at the town garage and the fire department um, were denied. Um, the other thing that was denied was we did hire um, a firm to do mold inspection and uh, mold is uh, not something that VLCT will covered so that was denied as well. Um, in total the the dollars were about three thousand dollars in in denial, um, and those have already been moved over to FEMA, and uh, they're on the FEMA damage inventory. So that's going to be the next step. Um, the other impact financially is there was a thousand dollar deductible, um, and that also is something that we're going to uh, apply to FEMA for reimbursement. So the third tier is uh, FEMA itself. Um, we have been assigned a new uh, contact manager 
and um, he's quite good, uh, very, very detail oriented. Um, unfortunately, it uh, really constitutes uh, a restart um, with FEMA. Uh, mo all of the data has been put together that they require. Um, there's a good amount of detail that is now being uh, asked for, and uh, I'm in the process of, of trying to get that um, to them. Uh, it's a slow process. Um, they've given us three, now it's four templates um, to work with, and uh, none of those templates have been successful. I think we have one now that we can work with, and I think we have a good... Uh, program manager um, to help us move this forward. But I wouldn't expect any um, uh, reimbursement or compensation from FEMA uh, in, in the near future. Um, it, this is going to definitely take some time. Um, one other thing that I uh, failed to mention is town hall. So this is going back to VLCT, uh, town hall has uh, not been approved at this point. Um, just to refresh you, Town Fall is in a uh, flood zone and anything that was in the flood zone in the state of Vermont um, was pooled together with all other uh, subscribing towns with a limit of $5 million. Um, so this includes some of Montpelier, it includes Johnson, um, Hardwick, uh, these are towns that got hit pretty hard. Uh, not that we didn't, um, but the uh, the claims are piling up. Uh, VLCT has put forty thousand dollars as a marker, um, but that has not been approved as of yet. Um, Terry believes that within the next two weeks we'll get the uh, final settlement for for town hall. Um, our damages there are about thirty. What is it? $39,000. So that $40,000 marker is, is pretty accurate. Um, so that's where we are with insurance. Is there any questions? All right. It's mentioned that the federal aid highway is 100% paid. Whereas FEMA only pays seventy five percent, so yeah. So the balls are rolling. Um, insurance is quite an interesting game, but um, I think we have a very good handle on it. And uh, at least from VLCT and from Federal Highway, um, some cash is starting to come back into the town. So that's that's what I have. Uh, for a report. Thank you, Bert. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to move on to the Can Cannabis Control Board. We have an application S5138. Um, I don't have that. Do you, ha who has that? Is that something we can see or have or what? I mean, what are we going to do? Kurt, are you the only one who has a copy of that from the state? Um, no, that was forwarded to the board. Um, I can look it up. But everybody should have gotten a copy. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, I found mine. Oh, good. January okay. January twenty second. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Okay, so we are as a cannabis control board are looking at a manufacturer's tier two, which has been submitted. Um, and the application is pending um, our approval.
all the information on it um, is not uh, the name and the address is not public knowledge or publicly. Is this an inside or outside grower? That should be. I think it's mine. It is. Right. We don't usually tell who it is. Yep. But it's not like a public building. It's just like a small space shed stuff. And it's all water extraction. It's not like the crazy butane or ethanol or whatever. It's just water extraction stuff. So it's drying. Uh, no, it's it's like it's extracting the plant material just through water and ice. Uh -huh. And then the crystals, so to say, like they, they fall to the bottom. Uh -huh. And that just goes through like like these fine mesh bags, and then that's it. That's that's not like a contraption that has ethanol and pressure and all that stuff. It's like super simple extraction. So you're not a not growing, you're extracting the CBD. I've got a cultivation license in the health works. Because I know the legislature is now going over the permitting. Yeah. Because there's been several towns where the people have complained about the odors. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There won't be odor with this. Well. No, I'm, I'm just saying something's coming up and I Mm -hmm. With your yeah. method and what you're doing is totally different. So I think it's just the growing part. Yeah. It's going to have to wait mm -hmm. for future. Yeah. I hope they can close some of them. It's supposed to be oversaturated very soon. Right. How many employees you got? Just you or just me and my buddy? Yeah. It's like we've got this machine that. It's almost like a giant washing machine. Yeah. So you just put the material in and you pretty much press the button. And 45 minutes later, you pull out like big bags, pretty much that are like, they have like different micron or mesh. And then that separates the, the, you pull the first one out and that's it. You below your material and everything that seeps through that in the next layer is like what you're looking for. And then that can be made into edible and smooth. So you're just going to process it, or are you going to grow it too? I, I'm, I grow it too, but that's the only more. Go to tier two cultivation. This permit is purely for the the manufacturing yep. of yeah. CBD. Yep. And in the future, we're I don't know if Kurt has told you guys, but we're trying to rent the space for a dispensary as well over at. Bucks is where that little clothing place and apocryphal area right next to Paris Fish there. And that way, hopefully, we can be more integrated and hopefully make it pretty easy. We need um, a motion to accept application S5138. I'll make that motion. We have a second. I'll second. Do we have any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So carry. So, Kurt, will you write the letter to the board? Yes, I'll take care of that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, but a quick question. Um, this is for the extraction process. Um, is there also an application out for the uh, retail space? It hasn't been submitted yet. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. We're going to get all our ducks in a row and cameras up and all the fun stuff. Move on to the wastewater project. We have Amy here uh, from Stone Environmental. Uh, she's one of our engineers working on our wastewater project. Thank you very much for the introduction, Linda. Yeah. I am glad to be back before you again, well over six months since the last time you saw our engineering services agreement for preliminary engineering. 
Um, since then, we have submitted it to the state a couple different times, um, went, gone through their review process, and the only real changes to the engineering services agreement that you um, have before you this evening are that we have reorganized the scope of work um, specifics and the exhibit C, how we get paid and you get reimbursed to correspond with the two different funding mechanisms that are underneath the engineering services agreement and underneath the wastewater project. So right now, what we have is the first 125,000 is clean water SRF subsidy, which is a fancy word for grant, but we can't say that. Um, it's a fully forgivable loan. And the balance will come out of the village wastewater ARPA grant funding. So that part has not changed where um, the town is still not uh, putting anything out of their pocket to advance the potential for the community wastewater project. And what is in our scope of work right now is specifically to assist the, assist the village, assist the committee and the select board in um, preparation for the bond vote in June and answering some of the big engineering questions that remain hopefully before um, the bond vote so that we have a better sense of what the cost is may end up being. So I am happy to take any questions, share my screen with the document, um, however, however you folks would like to advance this. Yes, I have one question. When was it approved by the board that we are going to take this 219,000 of ARPA money and put it towards this wastewater? So the, the village wastewater ARPA funding is not local ARPA, it's a state village wastewater initiative. So it's, a, it's still ARPA, but it's a completely different bucket of money that is only available for towns that are trying to advance community wastewater or water projects. Okay, thank you. Oh, well, it's 2.5 million. Correct. That yes. we received from the state. Um, it was their ARPA money just for wastewater projects, um, which they granted us. We have applied and asked for them from them, from that same bucket, for 1.4 million on top of that. They, I think, are waiting to see how the bond vote goes. I'm getting that feeling. We also received 125,000, as Amy said, for, um, they call it a loan, but we don't have to pay it back. That will help, um, help us um, get ready for the bond vote and beginning engineering um, to be able to have answers for the people for the bond vote. That comes from, from the state revolving clean water fund. Then we received that $640,000 um, from community resilience or something. And that is mostly geared towards uh, affordable housing and economic development in the area where there's wastewater. By having a wastewater system, it will allow for more housing and economic development in that area. So that's why they gave us that money. And we're still working hard on more money. But um, this document, um, which I did email, but it's too huge to um, print everyone out, but they can take it if they want. Um, the document is just to update a previously board approved agreement to show this additional grant funding and how it will be spent. Is that my understanding? That's correct. The, the major changes that we had to make over the last six months after talking with the Agency of Natural Resources folks were really just to kind of rejigger 
the tasks that already existed that the, the board has already approved us to to go ahead and, and figure it out um, so that it will be easier for you to get reimbursed. Because the state gave us so much money, they are pretty much overseeing every step of the way that we go and attend all our meetings. Um, make sure we're on the right track and doing everything legally. Yep. So you're asking tonight for approval to um, have me sign this agreement. Is that what you're doing? Yes, the, the if, if the select board doesn't have any further adjustments to it, um, we can go ahead and if you want to go ahead and execute on your end and send it back to, to Stone, I will line up the signatures on our end, um, lickety split. Okay. How's the board feeling? <laughs> so we'll need a motion. I'll make a motion okay. to sign the agreement. We have a second. 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 We have any more questions of Amy? You have a copy in your email. You want to read it? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So carried. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you, Amy. Now, Jim Ryan is here from the committee. Right. Are you going to speak, Tori or Seth, at all? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm here and prepared to answer questions, but I'll let Jim tee it all up. Hmm. Hi, everyone. I'm Jim Ryan. Uh, thank you for having me again. Uh, I was here a couple of months ago to give the support and update, update of the Wilkett Village Wastewater Committee. I'm the chair of the committee. Um, and just uh, a reminder that the, the committee is made up of uh, Wilkett residents, Alan and Linda from the select board on our committee, um, Stone Environmental, uh, Birchline Consulting, and the Vermont Department of Environmental Conservation um, in the capacity of uh, the regulatory capacity and also the grant funding capacity. So it's great to have them on board because uh, they, they are making sure that we have the funding that we need and um, that we're gonna be following all the Vermont DEC rules. I just thought to give a quick update um, <clears throat> and then maybe have a little focus on, on the grant funding piece. Um, we, at our uh, school board meeting back in December, uh, we had the school board uh, vote to approve the MOU between um, the school board and the town to site the wastewater system if approved by the bond vote um, at the athletic field at the school. And we had some back and forth after that uh, meeting to go between the town lawyers and the school board lawyers to do a little word smithing. And I think it's final, final, or, or it's- They all have a copy. So okay. they gave me, they asked that our town attorney review it, which he has, and you all, they all have a copy. It didn't uh, get to us in time to be on the agenda, so um, they're going to review it, and we will discuss it at our next meeting. And uh, we have a um, a bond vote set for June eleventh. It's a Tuesday, um, and there'll be two amendments or two two article two articles to vote on. One is. Um, if the voters will approve citing the system at the school athletic field. Um, and we we took uh, great care in addressing, uh, doing our due diligence to address the concerns of the school board as far as uh, well issues, potential contamination issues, um, distance setbacks, um, 
the use of the athletic fields and all the concerns that the school board brought up. And we had we had a, a, a good presentation with our technical staff to go over all of those uh, concerns and, and address all the concerns to the board's satisfaction. Um, so in addition to the, the article on uh, voters will decide about citing the system at the school, um, the, the other article will be to will be a bond vote for the balance uh, that is not funded through the grants funding. And I'll get into that in a minute. Um, just uh, we've been working very hard on the outreach side. We have an outreach subcommittee and we have been sending out regular front porch forum um, articles. We're having a um, we're setting up a table at town meeting. Um, I believe Linda and the select board are going to just make an announcement about the, the wastewater system and that we're going to uh, they can point the residents uh, out to our table to, for us to answer questions. We'll have some handouts. Uh, we're gonna have a uh, outreach, our first bigger outreach meeting. We wanted to wait till the school board signed the MOU before we did a big outreach push because if they denied it, this project would have been dead. Um, so the outreach meeting will be here um, on March 12th, which is the Tuesday, a week from town meeting. Uh, we'll go over um, what the system will look like, the maps, um, where where the system will run, um, the service area, well, everything like that, and and also um, address any questions that the public may have. And we're probably going to have a, a second outreach meeting uh, prior to the vote on June 11th for uh, when Amy, Amy was just mentioning we'll have uh, sharpen the pencil on the numbers have some more final numbers that we can go over before the vote. So everybody has a chance to see, uh, see what the final numbers are gonna be for the project. <clears throat> we decided last night to have uh, two meetings a month. We're trying to uh, be more efficient and get more work done. We, we've had lots of meetings in between our meetings, but we wanna really make sure we're prepared for the um, June 11th vote. And we have a separate outreach subcommittee that meets every couple of weeks as well. Um, on the uh, grants site, uh, Linda, was I handed out the, the grants? We have one. We can make copies. The, okay. what? the grant uh, matrix. Um, the one from last night. one from last night. No, I don't have one. Oh, the 12th outreach, what time is that? Uh, we are having our normal uh, wastewater committee. It's normally the first Tuesday of the month we have town meeting. The first Tuesday, so we're that's going to be. You didn't say what time? Um, we're going to have. We normally we start at five. We're going to have our regular meeting from five to six, and then at six we'll start the presentation. So you can come at five um, if you want to come for the regular meeting and six for the public outreach meeting. And we will be having pizza. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that would get me. To, that would get me to a meeting. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no surf and turf. Uh, so I uh, that I don't know if that would be helpful or not. But you have a copy of it because I, a, I only do. I have my one that she said was a draft. I have a scribble on it. But um, to, um, Tori, do you happen? To, would you be able to share that grant? Um, matrix handout by chance. I, I I was under the impression that uh, the board or had a got had a copy before the meeting. Yep, just one moment. I'll pull it up. Okay, so um, Tori's going to pull that up on the screen. It might be a little hard to read, so I'll go over over it. Thank you, Tori. Good seeing you, Amy. Haven't seen you in a while. Is Belinda here? No, she said she was going to be on start. Anybody have, uh, while Tori's pulling that handout, um, anybody have any general questions about the, the project? I, I, we can talk about the, the project all night if we wanted to. I was just trying to keep it brief, but. Um, brief. <laughs> Four o'clock comes too soon. <laughs> I'll just. Um, need to be granted access to be able to share my screen. Oh, I'm here. 
Yeah. It's like the granite tracks. <laughs> School buses, please. Oh, uh, oh, cool. Thank you. Um, uh, this, that's hopefully large yeah. enough. Oh, uh, as much as you could blow it up, Tori, would be great. Then we can make it scroll down. All right. So um, I'll, I'll start with the good news. Um, Linda mentioned some of the grants that we've just been awarded. The Lamoille Regional Planning Commission has been done a fantastic job in securing a ton of grants. Uh, so far, we have secured $3.33 million. That's quite a lot of money. Um, and most recently was the 640000 um, and that grant is it's up there is the CRRP grant, which is a Community Revitalization and Recovery Program grant. Um, we have that state ARPA, ARPA grant that Linda was mentioning before, uh, that 2.56 million. Uh, we have the $125,000 grant from the SWSRF loan subsidy um, that Amy was talking about uh, earlier tonight, and we have a second uh, CWCRF loan that is expected for the same for the same amount. So all of those um, those are totaling three point three three million. That doesn't include the one one twenty five that we have not yet received. In the pending category, we applied for a one point four three five million in state ARP, ARPA funding. Uh, that was the grant that Linda mentioned that state uh, DEC folks are maybe awaiting the results of our bond vote. And we should find that out. We'll find that out after. So unfortunately, after the vote. Um, and we have uh, listed there is the local uh, ARPA. That is the that is the town ARPA fund that Kurt, you were talking about before. So, um, and there's one other grant that is uh, we have yet to apply for. It's it's NBRC, and that uh, stands for Northern Borders Regional Commission. Um, that grant is seven hundred sixty-five thousand. That grant uh, requires a one-to-one -one match, and that's one of the reasons I'm here tonight. Um, to so that they require that same amount, so seven hundred sixty-five hundred thousand. And the thought here, or the ask to the select board, um, we are allowed to use this CRRP, the Community Revitalization and Recovery Program grant that's um, on line three, as a match for. Um, that Northern Borders seven hundred sixty five hundred thousand dollar grant that would, but they because they require the seven sixty five match that we would still be short of one hundred twenty five hundred thousand. Um, so the ask for the select board is to use the local ARPA grant one twenty five to meet that match, so we can secure the seven hundred sixty five. Hundred thousand. That you you had you were discussing that a little bit before, Kurt. But that's that's the the lo the town ARPA, which is different than the state ARPA. That's the one the town has full control over whatever we want to spend it on. Well, right now we have to replace the flat iron. Somehow we got to come up with money for a truck. If we take that amount of money. And we don't get the grants to fix flat iron, we're really going to be in a bind. Yeah, and that's I don't have enough background on the flat iron and the truck funding, and maybe well, uh, the, the problem is they're thinking of replacing this bridge this coming year. Right. If we don't have an alternate route, we got to come up with a alternate bridge. 
out of our pocket. FEMA will be fixing that road. Right. They might not fix it the way we would like in changes, but they will pay to put it back. Those, but but when we put it back, the money. Huh? It doesn't matter. We're not, we, the money, we need money for um, Jones Road. We're going to put that out. We just put a bid out for Town Hill Culvert. Um, right. But I, I'm, what I'm getting at is you're saying you want to do this, but it hasn't even been approved by the town. Would you say that, Kurt? Which, which one did you mean? It's wastewater. Yet we already know that we have to come up with these funds for these other necessities. Well, yeah, the other question is, uh, are these other necessities going to qualify for that? You could use it for ARPA. Because the big thing about the ARPA money was for the state, wastewater was one of their main things you could use it for. Right. Well, those... we gotta, we got to somehow come up with the repair on this bridge. question is, with the funding on that, was that will that be allowable under the rules of that funding? That's the good question. It's infrastructure. Well, what bridge do we have to come up with money for? Well, either we fix why they're fixing this bridge, either we put in an alternate bridge. Well, we've already said no, so we're not. So now you got to fix flat iron. We are. And where's the money coming from? The team is not going to just automatically write a check tomorrow. No, like we fix all our other projects. We take out a loan and pay it back when we get the FEMA money. Should we, just to make sure that I understand, should we choose to allocate the 125000 for a local match and then this gets shot down at the bond vote? What does that mean for that 125000 Is that just gone forever or does that? Yeah, it has to be spent before the end of the deadline so, either way. So you could use it for something else if not. Yes, so it's supposed to be committed by December of 2024. So if the bond vote fails, it will stay where it is. It'll still remain as the $125,000 in ARPA that we could then reallocate. Uh, when, well, Corey, when is that, um, when is that uh, grant? Can you give us the timeline for that grant you're talking about? The Northern yes. Borders? Yes, so um, the first um, piece that's due March 15th is the pre-application. Um, then Northern Borders would review, and then if the project's selected, you'd be invited to submit a full application by May 3rd. Um, and then by June 28th, Northern Borders is expected to release notifications for both successful and unsuccessful applicants. So the timeline's between March 15th and June 28th for the spring round. But what, what we're saying is, um, you're saying June 28th is when the grant would be awarded? Uh, yeah. So we would know by then whether we wanted to accept the grant or not? Yes. Again, to make sure that I understand that yeah. the conversation tonight is whether or not we're willing to potentially allocate this mm -hmm. should the voters say yes. Right. So if you uh, on that. No, I think yeah. it, just for clarification, I um, we they would apply for the grants by the, the application date is 15. March 15th. Uh, so they would have to apply by then and they would notify after the bond vote, but if the vote was rejected, then we wouldn't need it. Right. Well, just just trying to quell your concerns about what we do with that money. I mean, tonight's conversation is really just about the potential that we're willing to allocate that as a match. If we could find another funding source for 125000 to match this, we could also do it that way, depending on how... I mean, again, just trying to make sure that I'm up to speed here. And, and this seems this um, this grant that we're discussing here, the Northern Borders grant, is, is likely the the last grant that we can apply for. That would actually, if we got all of this funding, we'd actually have more than enough to pay for the project in its entirety. The problem is we wouldn't know because, in, like we said, June 28th, and then the fall notification for the other, the 1.4 uh, million, we wouldn't know about those until after the vote. 
Um, but pot potentially we would have more, if we've gotten all of this funding, we would have more than we need for the project to build the project, to pay for the permitting, to pay for the design um, and, and everything else. That's separate from the, the annual maintenance of the project is to be totally transparent and clear, which we're, we're working on figuring out what that cost will be for village residents and trying to make it as affordable as possible. This is to build the project and to hook people up, which would be uh, included in that, in that cost that we're talking about, the overall cost. And we have right now the estimate for the total overall cost is, is 4 million and we're short that that 765 um, that we could get in that one in that one grant. Other questions? Any motion? Well, as I've said previously, it's an application for, for a grant. Um, tonight's conversation is about an application for a grant. We're not allocating any ARPA, as far as I'm aware. I would make a motion to apply for that grant. With the understanding, though, that we, uh, we by a time, we have to have a match. Yes. Yeah. Apply for the grant with the understanding that we would need to match those funds. And one possible avenue would be our, the ARPA funds. Do we have a second? Uh, second, Do we have any further discussion on that? Questions, Jim? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Opposed, Bert? Sure. Bert's opposed. Okay. Anything else? Uh, uh, glad to come whenever folks would like to have me back. Um, and we're going to, um, if the board has any ideas on how we can uh, reach folks, we want we want to be uh, we want to reach as many people as we can. We want to be as transparent as we can, um, and and talk about be able to answer any folks' question. We have a lot of information on our website on the Waste Board Committee website um, that might answer anybody's questions about the project. You said those meetings are the first Tuesday? First Tuesday, except for next month because of town meeting, which will, it'll be on the 12th that, that month. Uh, actually, I'll clarify, as of yet, as of last night, we're having two meetings a month, first and third. Um, so we're probably gonna have back-to-back -back meetings in March the 12th and the 19th. Five to seven. Five to seven, yes. And we have agenda, agendas uh, will come out a week or so before the meeting on the website. And they're here. Right, right here. And we have all the meeting um, summaries, meeting minutes that, that go up on the website as well. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Meeting us. <laughs> uh, select board review action. Um, designation of Pima money for Brook Road. We have um, received one hundred. Well, we have received one hundred twenty-four thousand four hundred seven dollars. Um, that was the balance owed us for the Brook Road for FEMA 2019. They finally paid us the balance. So uh, we owed, um, we used $2,614.32. The town um, 
who used their money to pay off our loan that we took out um, to cover the cost of construction for that project, leaving us a balance of 121,792. So we need to, um, Belinda's wanting to know where to designate that money. Can we put it in the general fund so we can do whatever we want with it or need to? We can. I gave you some um, ideas of things that um, some wants down there on the bottom there that are coming up. One thing that we should do every year, though, we did not do it in our budget because we didn't have the money, but we've done it with leftover money, is we should at least put some money in our capital uh, reserve fund. Uh, that's what pays for capital projects. Um, we have over 300000 in there, and we should continually build that up in case we need a new roof you know, build a new bridge or our share or something. So that's what that money's there. It also can be used for highway stuff. Um, we're running into the, um, we don't really have any money in our select board budget when grants come forward to make matches. Um, so that kind of prohibits our having the opportunity to have more funds for the town, whether it be a recreation grant or a planning grant or this grant out there in the river to take the abutment out. We should really think about having a little money um, stockpile for that sort of thing that comes up. We talked about an air exchange. I have no idea what that costs and uh, possibly a new generator. I'll have both, trucks. I'll have both of those quotes next week. Uh, next meeting. Uh, the generator and the air exchange. Do you want to just put the money back in the general fund until we hear what those quotes are? Good idea. All right. Here. All right. All right. So we'll put that on the agenda. Uh, the money. Um, where to allocate that money? Next week after we uh, hear our presentations on the generator and the air exchange. Regional flood protection discussion group. Um, Seth reached out to me to find out. Um, he wrote, the town of Johnson has reached out to the Lamoille County Planning Commission assets to help we can be a regional discussion about long-term flood protection and coordinated flood response recovery in Lamoille watershed. Um, so he's writing an email to gauge interest among local leaders. Um, would Woka be interested in a structured discussion about these issues? Would the select board be interested in appointing one to three people to participate on behalf of the town? We would envision three to five meetings during the winter spring 2024 and then perhaps bi-monthly or quarterly depending on interest. So what's the board's feeling on that? And is there anyone interested if you're interested? any other further details, Seth, on that? Sure. I can provide a little bit of um, extra information. Um, shortly after the flood, some folks from Johnson reached out to LCPC about trying to pull together um, people from um, communities along the Lamoille River to uh, talk about um, potential ways to um you know short term improve 
um, communication or coordination during um, during a flood. I think, as we, we know, in July, um, you know, the, you know, there were some difficulty getting state resources to some of the communities. Um, so, you know, thinking about, you know, mutual support in the few days after a flood, um, and then longer term, looking at potential ways to uh, reduce flood impacts. So, you know, an example of that would be the scoping study that the select board approved for land across flat up from Flatiron Road as a, you know, relief area to keep the water from getting on Flatiron Road. Um, looking at trying to identify those kinds of areas up and down the river and if, you know, the communities were working together potentially larger uh, options like that. Um, so the idea is, you know, to have, you know, three to five meetings to start, see if it does seem like um, this is getting value for the communities. And if so, to keep it going, um, you know, quarterly or so to keep, keep check-ins going and to try to bring resources to the region to address some of these um, issues that, you know, came up during, uh, during the July and December floods. Um, and, I'll, and I'll say just one last thing, it also could help raise awareness about the impacts that communities in Lamoille County have faced and people have faced, because as you know, a lot of the attention has been to the Barry and Montpelier area. Um, and we want to make sure that people don't forget that, um, you know, Wolcott and Johnson and Cambridge and other parts of Lamoille County were impacted, um, as well as those larger communities. Does the board care about that? Do they have any interest? Do you think we have a need? Um, with this? No. Would it have to be a select board? No, because um, I'm, no. Like, I'm like at my limit. Could be front porch for them, see if there's a volunteer that wants to do it. Right here. Or more. So it sounds like the board has an interest. Um, they would like us to reach out to some community members and see if we can gather a couple to uh, represent us. That that sounds good. Okay. We'll do that. We'll do some uh, advertising to see or, or reaching out to some people who we think might be interested. Great. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Okay. Um, I just have a couple updates. Put a few things on the board that I've been thinking about up here that need we need to think about doing. Um, our Contract for winter sand ends uh, June 30th. We usually put a three year contract, um, sign a three year contract with someone, but it needs to go up to bid because of uh, the size, the monetary size. He bids for the fuel oil on the road and propane. Um, basically, I'm saying that because Borns was just sold uh, to a company out of Maine. And I don't know what they'll be like. We should make sure that we have um, a good contract going forward. Yeah. It's a deep river. Deep river, dead river. 
Maybe Dad. I think it's Dead River. They're out of Maine. Yeah. I see them up north a lot. And um, I guess with talking with Kurt, uh, we realized that we have some holes in our class four road policy. So I think we need to uh, work on updating that. If anybody would like to help with anything. Basically, it's when the snow comes, it's the end of spring, isn't that on the class four range? Well, what we're finding with FEMA is um, we want to replace the culvert that got destroyed on Foss Road, um, but they want proof. Uh, we can't find it, doesn't spell it out. If it's spelled out in our class four policies that we were responsible for culverts on class four roads. We're not responsible for the maintenance. You know, we'd probably get reimbursed, but we can't can't really find anything that we can prove to them that we need to, they need to pay for that. Um, I, I think the problem is the landowner has to get it to grade and then we fix it after. Yeah, but we yeah, we don't fix it. That's to that's to take it over. I mean, they're not asking class four road, boss road to take it over, but that culvert is is pretty destroyed. They want it, you know. Is it the landowner wants it replaced or well, nobody could really drive out. They're all stuck in there. I mean, we have a responsibility that people live in there. I'm gonna say I, I have quite a few people that live up in there. I hadn't read the policy, but it was my understanding with class four roads that you know we were responsible for passable but passage your own risk. We don't do winter maintenance. We don't do winter that's true. But it, my understanding was that they had to be they had to be passable. But again, I haven't read the policy. Uh, I would love to be brought up to speed on that and be a part of and be a part of any updates. So our class four policy is on our website, um, pretty big. And um, um, Kurt and I have both spent the last couple of days reading through the highway statutes. Um, that's pretty much what it says. It says pretty basically, it says it's up to the select board um, to determine what's in the best interest for the property owners or something. For years and years and years, though, I've been told that class four roads, the town's only responsible for culverts and bridges. That was like drummed into my head, but I can't find it anywhere. Can you offer anything? My understanding of class four road is it's to be graded once a year, minimum and passable by motor vehicles. It's my understanding of class four roads. Now, the only thing I remember from being on the board previous was it was up to the landowners to do any of the road maintenance. We were just to grade it. So if they wanted it ditched, they ditched it. If they want to put a culvert in or a bridge, that was their concern. The classic one is what's the one up here? Turpot. Turpot. We get it all the time. Yes, yes, yes. There's only one person that screams about it, and the others are hunting camps. They don't want it fixed or brought up. And I don't think the town puts in six inch plastic vinyl pipe for culverts. And that's where the big discussion was. Looks like they've got a lot of lat latitude on this. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, you know, sorry. Well, anyway, we need to look at it. And uh, it wouldn't hurt to upgrade anyway. It's probably pretty old. Um, now, the Foss Road is the one off from the Elmore Pond Road. Uh -huh. Got to go through a lot of ledge to get to where they're going. But they do. David Monica lives up there. Ruth yeah, Anna with her four or five kids. 
Um, it used to be a nice room. Mostly, mostly slip not been there. Um, it, I mean, it's a. We're not, yeah. If you got to all buy four vehicle, yes. If you don't, God help you. I wonder if there's anything in the. If there's anything in the state, state road standards or something. The legal cities and towns should have a basic policy. But... Yeah, I looked at the in the orange book too today and it didn't, it just kind of said the same thing the state statute said. I'm going to say because that, that culverts and bridges mantra that you were just saying, that sounds familiar to me too, but I'm trying to place where that could be. I know where the culvert's got to be, but still, there, there's so much ledge that you've got to weasel in and out of. Well, it doesn't matter. They yeah, live I know. there. The culverts have been there for since I've lived here. Oh, yeah. 40, 50 years. Um, it's, it got destroyed in the flood, and the residents kind of would like it replaced. Uh, Kurt, what is wrong with that culvert? Sorry, I was muted. Uh, this is Foss Road. Yeah. Is yeah, that... yeah. Go ahead. Um, so we didn't have time to actually put a new culvert in. Um, so the area was filled in, but it's a, it's a big dip and very difficult uh, to pass by. Um, it is a large culvert. I think it's going to need to be replaced with a 24 inch um and uh you know the 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 water just washed it out and it caved in um so it was an old culvert um rusted and uh, all the water we had in that rain caused it to cave in I think we're going to run into a problem is they're going to say if you're going to need that size culvert, they'll want a bridge or a box culvert. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going to require a box. It's just that the, uh, the water flow in that area is uh, pretty high, it's pretty <laughs> rapid. Um, so that is the culvert that's been recommended. Um, and, you know, our assumption always has been that class four roads are not maintained by the town, but the town does have responsibility for bridges and culverts. And as Linda said, we've been, you know, at, uh, at FEMA's request, we've been searching, searching for uh, that language, either in statutes or policy, and we can't find it. <laughs> It's almost as if we all believed in a something that isn't there. What I, would do the... I do think the select board, however, has the authority to, you know, to modify the town policy. Oh, yeah. Well, my problem is if we modify it to say that we're going to replace culverts, we're going to end up in a big expense. Just remember, pretty much on every class four road, there's somebody living there that's paying taxes. They know that when they go in, I know, but um, they should be able to get in and out for something. This maybe. particular culvert is at, um, it's right at uh, the pond road. So mm -hmm. it's just a few maybe 30 feet up from the pond road. And so everybody lives up there. That's how they're trying to access it. And if that thing goes, um, they're not gonna be able to get across it. What would the cost to the town be to replace it? Um, I'm gonna have to look that up. I do have the cost of the culvert somewhere. Go ahead with the discussion, I'll find it. Placing that one is as effective as changing the policy though. I mean, if- Well, if you change the policy, now everybody and their brother's gonna go. 
if if we if we don't change the policy and we change the one on Foss Road and somebody at the end of Zach Woods decides that they need a culvert and they find out that we paid for one but won't pay for the other, we're we're helping. You're in a catch twenty two. You're better off to say to them, you know, here's the cost, divide it up. Yes, you are a taxpayer, but you bought on that with that premise. I know that we offer things like driveway culverts to residents at cost. Is there any way that we... Well, that's what I'm saying. They could buy the culvert. We could put it in. Well, that was the question. Could we offer to put it in if they reimbursed us for... I mean, could we work a deal with those residents? That's what I would do. Um, to try and share the burden. I mean, you know, that'll keep us out of that pitfall. Because if you're only talking I mean, 3000 per culvert, they split the share and we're going to have to pay 3000 labor. I'd rather see that than get into that catch 22. That um, the culvert is $48.87 a foot. Um, so call it $5 and they need what, 20, 24 feet? Yes, $48 per feet, per foot. And I think it's going to be about 20 feet. So, um, yeah, I say it's a thousand, I say it's a thousand to twelve hundred dollars. Say twelve hundred dollars. If they come up with twelve hundred, we'll put it in. Make everybody happy. That sounds feasible. I'm amenable to the idea, but that doesn't protect us in the future. Yeah, you know, we need protection for the future. That's that's the catch 22 right there, right. Maybe we all need to look at what the state statute says before we come to a decision. I'm not ready to do that. I think you need to read that. But basically, we just I mean, next three. Perfect. We really can't afford to upgrade our service levels on class four roads. My God. <laughs> I'm going to say, have you seen class three construction budget? <laughs> yeah. How many class four roads do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. On your driveway. Not my driveway. I'm kidding. What's the what's the story with Tamarack? I know that that's still listed as a as a right of way. It's a cool point. It's a trail. The bottom part is um Glass to the first well from Town Hill, we made it a trail. I see. After it got yeah, after, after the bend. beginning. Um, and from the bottom up from yeah, Feistus. North Walk, it goes to Feistus. Yeah. The rest was all thrown up. Yeah. We got a grader instead. <laughs> There's no way you could fix that road. No, I, I was up there a few weeks or a couple of months ago. It's the area to Turkey Hub. So uh, the other thing, and then we'll. Call it a night. Um, so all the paperwork for that North Wolcott buyout is in. They're just waiting for money. Um, I, I, uh, uh, three appraisals were done on the three houses today that have been approved for the buyouts. I went with a woman. It'll be a couple weeks. She'll see whether... Um, once the report from her comes in with what her appraised value is of those homes, the buyers can decide whether they want to accept it or not. You're talking the two down here and the one in North Wolcott. No, the one in North Wolcott, they don't have any money. That's on pending. I'm talking about Tammy Westover, Betty Lou Stratton, and Andy Gibbs. Has anyone else applied or thinking of it? Cole uh, oh, Harrison, who lives on the other side of Andy, Levi Martin on the other side, mm. and North Boca. So potentially another four. Is there a reason that they haven't been approved yet or just a backlog? 
It's because um, the ones that have been approved are not considered in the floodplain. Yeah. And that funding came through the Vermont Emergency Management Alpha <coughs> Funds. Mm -hmm. The other three are in the floodplain and they will have to go through FEMA and you have to do a cost benefit ratio. It's, um, I signed a memorandum with uh, Vermont Emergency Management for them to do those. Um, the one in North Wilkett is because they've run out of funding and they're hoping the legislature will give them some more. Okay, does anyone else have, have anything they want to say on Roland before we go? Make the motion, we adjourn. I'll second that. 7.30. So we'll have to find something on fast forward. I'll bring what the state statute says next week. If I'm not mistaken, we got at least seven. Your name's down in. Huh? I have to sit down.